We're going to take a look at one more list function that's found inside of Microsoft Excel. We actually saw this one in kind of a roundabout way in an earlier lecture during this course when we were talking about subtotals. We didn't drill down into it, but the subtotal feature utilizes a function to create the calculations called subtotal. So we're going to take a look at the pros, the big advantages that you get here, utilizing the subtotal function within Excel. Take a look. So once again, I've got the exercise file open and I'm still working with the list functions worksheet where we were playing around with the D average, D sum, and D count functions. Now, I want to sum up the total expense column here, but uh, this list can potentially be filtered. Take a look. I'm going to jump up here to the H column, and I'm going to do a simple sum function here, just utilizing regular old sum okay, that we all know and love, and you probably use time and time again. Now, what do I want to sum up? I want to sum up the total expenses. So this is going to be from F2. I'm going to do Control Shift Down Arrow to F59. I'll hit my Enter key, and I've got Ooh, what is that? That's a huge number. So $1,428,320.00. All right, now that's using a standard sum function. Okay. Now, what if I now filter this list? What would happen to that number? Well, we're going to find out here in a moment. Now, I'm going to jump over to the I column, and I'm going to create a very similar function here. I want to sum up that range of cells, but... Rather than using the standard sum function, I'm going to use the subtotal function, and I'm going to tell it the type of subtotal that I want is a sum. Watch this. So I'm inside of I1. I'll go up to my Formulas tab. I'm going to go to Insert Function, and I'm going to find the subtotal function. I'll type subtotal in. I'm going to hit Go. There's subtotal. So it returns a subtotal in a list or a database. Okay, that's not very descriptive, but great. All right. I'm going to hit OK. So now the first thing it wants to know is the function number. For a subtotal, it needs to know, well, what, what type of subtotal do you want to perform here? Do you want to do a sum, an average, a count, a min, or a maximum? What, what, what type of subtotal do you want? Well, it tells me down below that uh, function number is a number 1 to 11 that specifies the summary function for the subtotal. Okay, great. So I got 11 different subtotal functions that I can perform here. Well, what does 1 mean? What does 2 mean? What is, what is 3 and, and so on? What's 11? How do I get to a sum function? Well, in order to find out what 1 to 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 mean, I'm going to click on the link down here that says help on this function. So this will take just a moment to launch, but this is going to bring up my help window, and it brought up help on the subtotal function. This is great. I'm going to scroll down, and I can see that a 1 would be average, 2 would be count, and so on. I want a sum. So I'm going to find number 9 is a sum. So I'll close my help window. I'm going to type in the number 9, which means sum. Now the next thing, they're calling it ref1 or reference1. I need to tell it the range of cells that I actually want to subtotal, in this case, that I want to sum up. So for me, my reference one, I'm going to grab F2, control shift down arrow, to F59. That's the range of cells that I want to create a subtotal for that I want to sum up. I'll hit OK. All right, exact duplicates, $1,428,320, exactly the same over here for subtotal. I'm performing a subtotal, but I'm summing within that subtotal. What's the difference? I mean, they gave me the exact same results. Well, take a look. I'm going to go back to my list. I'm going to filter this list now. So remember this. I'll click into my list. Doesn't matter where. I'll go to data. I'll turn on my filter button. Now I get those little drop downs. Remember talking about those in the first section? I'm going to say, you know what? I want to filter for division. I don't want to see all divisions. I just want to see east. Now watch my numbers over here. Remember this one right here, H column, that's a standard sum. I column, that's a subtotal. I'll hit OK. Ooh, look at that. My subtotal updated, $266,285.
but my grand total, right, the sum is still stuck on the complete set of records. I change it from, maybe I want east and north. Now I've got my grand total for just those two using the subtotal function, but I've still got the grand total here with the standard sum. So you got a big advantage with the subtotal feature. It's gonna update based on what you're filtering for. There are different types of subtotals, not just sum, but you had average and count and min and max and a handful of other ones. A standard sum function with a list like this is static. It will always look at the complete set of records, even though you filtered it. Try these two out. Open up the exercise file, jump into list functions, do the sum first, get a total expense sum, and then do the subtotal. Remember, if you want to sum with the subtotal, what are you going to use? What's the function number? Nine. And remember, you can get to help. Go into help. Take a look at all the different subtotal functions that you can use.